Hey guys, Chris and Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a Makita four-stroke blower to look at. Now it's not a review or it's not an unboxing because I haven't bought it new. Pro let's call it a service and check over and the video may turn out to be a repair because I don't know the condition of this. But what happens is I'm a second-hand dealer, as many of you would know, and we clean out people's sheds. This turned up in a deceased estate shed clean out. It looks relatively new, but I have no idea on its condition. So let's go through and do a service on it, do some checks. I'll point out a few things to look for if you own one of these models. Uh, we also got the, the blower tubes with it. So we will check it all out. If we can get it to run, we'll give it a good test out. And I guess that's when it'll return into a, a review video. So let's service this and check out some things and see if we can get it to go. Okay, a few details first. It's a model BH, BHX 2500 Makita. It is a four-stroke, so it's not a two-stroke blower. It's a four-stroke blower. Uh, it is made in, assembled in the USA, Makita Corporation of the... Uh, it's made in Japan, I think. And I have a feeling it was made by Robin, who also made um, Subaru. Not too sure. I know there's a connection there somewhere. Um, but Makita are certainly a well-known and generally a pretty good quality um, equipment maker. So it looks quite nice. But being a four-stroke, is it going to be a good unit? I did see a few reviews and a few videos online, and most people seem to love them. Uh, the four-strokes, of course, run a bit differently than a two-stroke. They rev lower. They develop a bit more torque at lower revs. So they're generally quieter, and they're generally an easy start engine. So let's set the, mic uh, the camera up and um, do a few checks on it before we even pull the rope. Now, because I don't know its history, and I don't know how long it's been since it was last used, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that there's no old fuel in the tank. Um, probably not so critical with a four-stroke, because two-stroke fuel will separate and cause lots of problems. Four-stroke fuel well it's of course it's just straight unleaded or it should be um, hopefully they haven't used the ethanol fuel in it because that's not good for small engines as a rule so i think the tank's empty but we'll maybe just put a little bit of fuel in there and flush it out if the tank is empty i don't think we need to pull the carby apart unless we have some problems we will check the air filter we'll check the spark plug uh, and we'll check the oil because this is a four stroke it has a sump now i don't know if the last owner uh, has a good let's get the fuel cap out of the road I don't know if the last owner had good practice with small engines or not but ideally there shouldn't be any fuel in here oh there is fuel so that's one of the tips I'm going to give you with any small engine when you've finished using it run the thing out of fuel and we'll do that when we're finished but it's especially important on two strokes but I think it's even good practice that's a funny yellowy color it's probably quite old but uh, it looks clean, and the good thing is there doesn't appear to be any water in it, so that's great. All right, so there's a little bit of fuel in there. I still don't think we'll need to pull the carby apart unless there's a problem, but let's take the air filter off and see what that's like. Okay, there's just one screw here to remove the air filter or the air filter cover. Let's see how the previous owner was with his maintenance. Hopefully it's not too dirty. Now, the cover, I think, just pulls out at the bottom somehow. There we go. It's got a couple of locating tabs at the top. And it was a bit oily and greasy underneath. So there's our air filter. It does look a little dirty. That's no, not too bad. So that's a foam pre-filter, which um, they can break down as they get older and start to fall apart. That feels pretty good. So we'll just give that one a wash up. And there's a, a main air filter behind that and it looks quite soaked in fuel yeah it's a bit as you can see from my fingers it's quite oily but that's not such a bad thing but we'll wash that out as well so the air filters are okay they just need a wash up okay we have a choke control here works on a little little gear that's quite a nice little movement actually it feels very positive uh, now we have fuel lines coming down to the tank from the, the carby, and these ones have a primer bulb underneath the carby. Let's see if we can see that. Uh, 
uh, you can see there's the primer bulb and they do need priming to start them now the bulb because it's a, a, a flexible rubber type material they can perish and need replacing with age this one feels okay i won't prime it yet because i want to make sure that we get clean fuel into the carpet and not pump dirty fuel in uh, also the fuel lines this is the return line and it's clear so that you can see the fuel going back through to the tank and the black hose is the pick main pickup hose which will have a filter on the end of it in the tank we might blow a bit of compressed air back through that just to clean the filter out uh, they as well can break down with age especially if you store it in your shed and the sun shines on these the uv rays from the sun will actually damage the uh, the rubber so but they feel flexible enough i think they're going to be okay so i'm going to pull these fuel lines off here and it's not something you'd normally do with a service but because i don't know how long it's been since this unit has been run and i don't know the quality of the fuel i'm going to pull them both off and it just also gives us a good idea of the condition of the fuel lines themselves because yeah that's quite good they've still got their flexibility so they'll be okay and now i can blow a little bit of compressed air back through that one which will bubble into the filter in the tank and just make sure it's nice and clean so i don't think we need to do anything else with the carby now i will blow a bit of compressed air around here to clean it up a bit let's check the spark plug next okay the spark plug is accessible under this cover so we lift that tab up and slide it back and I don't think the cover actually comes right out. You could probably get it out, but there's no need. The spark plug boot, if we can see here, maybe from an angle, there we go. Spark plug boot's just down in there. So we should be able to lift that off, maybe with the screwdriver. And I'm going to take the spark plug out just to have a look at it, because the spark plug condition of a spark plug will tell us a bit of a story about how the engine's been run just looking through at the cylinder in there it looks nice and clean there's no build up of dry grass or leaves which is very important of course on an air-cooled engine you don't want to obstruct the airflow okay i have a deep breech socket here uh, this is a 5.8 socket i'm not sure if the spark plug is a metric size or not i think 5.8 is similar to 15 mil or 16 mil not sure but this one fits fine Okay, it wasn't overly tight. Let's pull it out and have a look. And I, if, I, if there was a lot of dirt and dry grass and everything around the cylinder, I would be careful pulling it out because you don't want any foreign materials falling into the cylinder. But it's pretty clean in there. Okay, here we go. What does this tell us? We get a focus on that. Yeah, it doesn't look pretty good. The spark plug gap's quite large. I would say that's probably a little bit large, but it's not wet. I wouldn't have expected that because I haven't tried to start it. But it looks pretty good. It doesn't appear to be pitted. Uh, if you use eth ethanol fuel in a small engine, you sometimes get strange deposits on the spark plug. If they've been running very hot, uh, it'll look uh, kind of whitish. So it looks pretty good. I think we'll give it a really quick clean up and that should be fine. Maybe close the gap just a whisker. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a scrub with a fine wire brush and just poke the wires down around the edge and give it a bit of a twirl. Just cleans any carbon out from around the spark plug that's likely to cause it to short. Okay, that cleaned up well. I would say this engine has hardly done any work at all. I'd say it's still pretty new. All right, I've just checked the gap and the book actually says, I just looked up online and it says 0.7 to 0.8 mil. So the gap's not so bad might have been slightly larger if you don't have a feeler gauge an old hacksaw blade is a good guide uh, generally any small engine or any engine will run fine if the gap between the electrode is around about a hacksaw blade thickness all right so we'll put this back in but i just noticed let's get a focus i did notice it's quite grotty around the top i'm not sure what that is so let's just clean that up first there we go that looks a bit better we might as well have both ends of a spark plug looking good it's an ngk cmr6a and i would say that's probably the original plug just before we put the spark plug back in i do like to make sure that i have spark so uh, we don't want any uh, hard start problems because our spark's dodgy but we've cleaned the plug we should be able to see a spark really easily now i've just got a jumper lead clipped onto the spark plug and attached to 
a part of the engine there so it's got an earth it is a little difficult on these plastic cased units to actually find an earth sometimes but we should be able to have a spark there let's give it a pull over and see if you can see a spark yep no worries you do of course have to make sure that your kill switch is on uh, many of people have tried to repair a small engine with bad spark problems only to realize later on that it uh, was perfectly fine it's just that the switch was off we'll put the spark plug back in now you don't want to over tighten them either because um, the spark plug screws into the head which is only a cast aluminium and the thread can be quite easily stripped and you're going to cause major headaches if you strip the spark plug thread they can be repaired but it's a big job so just nip it up so it's firm that's all we need to do put the boot back on and we can then slide this cover back into position so our electrics are okay our fuel we'll put some fresh fuel in here shortly I've still got these leads off so I might blow a bit of air back through the fuel filter next and then we need to check the oil okay let's clean it there's fuel lines a little bit I've just got uh, my air compressor charged up hopefully it doesn't kick in while we're talking I'm just going to blow a little bit of air down through the lines I've put some fresh clean unleaded fuel in the tank now this one's the return line so there's no filter on the end of that one and this is the main pickup line so you can probably see the the froth and bubble in the tank so there's lots of good airflow going through the filter and that should have flushed anything out of the filter we'll tip this fuel back out and i'll put some uh, fresh stuff in again before we go to start it um, you don't want to do that in an enclosed area or while you're smoking because you're going to get some volatile fumes coming out of the tank there so make sure you've got a well ventilated area and now we can put these hoses back onto the carburetor so the clear one goes on the outside there and the other one goes up on the inside they've pushed up nicely if they're at all hard i would suggest replacing them because they're only going to give you trouble in the future um, so now i'll tip that fuel out we'll put some fresh fuel in we can put the cap back on and our fuel system is right to go unless we have some running troubles once we get it started and then we're going to have to look at the carburetor and perhaps clean out some jets or something but i'm not going to touch that because i'm assuming the thing was working fine when it was put in storage and um it should be okay okay fresh fuel in the tank again now the cap's been back put back on the fuel lines are back on what i'm going to do now is put the choke on and just hold a rag across that because we don't want any dust or anything getting into the engine and i'm just going to clean off around the carby and around the rest of the machine just with some compressed air okay that looks a bit better and as far as the general service go it's good to clean them down and just make sure that there is no excessive dirt or dried grass or leaves in around the cylinder because as i mentioned earlier it is air cooled and you need that airflow to keep everything cool if it was at all clogged up inside there i would take the cowling off and blow everything out but it looks really clean in there and as i mentioned earlier too i, I suspect this unit's probably done less than 10 hours work from new so all we have to do now is check the oil so let's have a look at that and see what the level's like. Okay, it just has a little dip down. Yeah, plenty of oil in it. Looks nice and clean too. I don't think that even needs changing, you know. That looks really good. Let's just wipe the dipstick off again. Now we have a, a low level, uh, an about right and a high level. We'll just check it again you don't need to screw the cap in to check the oil and the difference is only going to be about five mil and you have plenty of leeway in the gauge here on the on the stem and it's it it's at full actually you don't want to have it over full but there's plenty of oil in there it's nice and clean that's good we don't even need to give it an oil change if i was servicing it i would uh and if you're servicing yours start it and run it for five or ten minutes let it warm up and then drain the oil out and put some fresh oil in i think it only holds about 80 mil so it doesn't hold very much oil and i think the recommended oil is a 10w30 but if you've still got the books for yours check that out or you can look it up online 
so there we go our oil's fine we'll pretend we've changed it because it looks near new this unit may not have any done any more than one hour's work uh i don't know how old it is i believe it's still the current model and i don't think i said that at the start but i think you can still buy these new and i think they're around about 300 dollars or thereabouts but i have been making this model for quite a long time so they're clearly a successful unit so as far as our servicing goes we've made sure we've got nice fresh fuel and we've blown back through the fuel filter i've just got to clean the air filters and put them in so our fuel should be right unless there's a carby problem our sparks right we've checked and cleaned the plug the gap's okay uh, our air filters we've made sure that there's no contamination around the cooling parts of the engine so it's pretty well all done. I don't think I've forgotten anything. I'll just clean the air filters, put it back together. We'll prime it up and we'll see if it starts. So I've washed the air filters out in petrol. Uh, I'm not going to blow compress compressed air through them. It would create quite a volatile mixture in my workshop here. So I'm not going to blow it through there. The other thing is that the air compressor can be quite harsh on air filters, especially some of the chainsaw filters. You can actually damage them by... By strong jets of air so i'm just going to leave these air dry they won't take very long because the petrol evaporates pretty quickly um, if you've got an engine that only has the foam filter i like to wash them out in two-stroke fuel because it cleans them out and the petrol evaporates off and it leaves a light film of oil which helps trap the dust uh, in this case this is just a pre-filter the main filter here they're in pretty good condition so we'll just leave those dry and we'll pop them back on the machine now that they're dry, we can pop the filters back on. That one just sits snugly in there. And the foam one can looks like it can go either way. There's no there's no difference in shape. Uh, actually I think we're supposed to put it in the cover first. Yep, yeah, it sits in there nicely. We have two locating lugs at the top. And it locates at the bottom. We'll put the screw in. And do that up. So our blower is completely back together, ready for a test run. Okay, ready to give it a start. Uh, quick check. The stop switch is on. Well, it's off. It's on. It's ready to run. Uh, these have a throttle lock, but it's actually just to lock the throttle on when you're actually blowing unlike a chainsaw or a two-stroke you don't actually need a throttle lock to start it uh, we have a choke so we're going to put the choke on and we're going to prime it now with the primer you don't need to count i watched a few reviews and they said to count seven to ten pumps really there's a clear line here so that you can see when it's primed so, and you'll also feel it so each time you pump it should be sucking fuel out of the tank remember we blew some air through the lines and there i don't know if you saw that the bulb feels tight now and it's pumping fuel back down through the discharge line back into the tank. So that tells me it's primed. We've got the choke on. It should be just a matter of a, a pull on the rope to start it. Now it hasn't been started for God knows how long. It's been in my shed for 12 months waiting for me to get to this. And I don't know how long it was sitting in the other shed from the deceased estate. So let's see how we go. first go but it died so we'll leave the choke on now we'll take some choke off That's beautiful, it sounds like a little mini bike. So that started really well, and I believe they're an easy starter all the time. So turn the switch on. Because it's been running, we may not even need choke. How good's that? So I don't have any blowing jobs at the moment as far as dead leaves or grass clippings or anything. So let's just blow a few of the shrubs around the yard a bit. It certainly pumps out plenty of air. Uh, it's probably not quite the same volume as some of the high revving two strokes but it's uh it's very light convenient to use well, it's very light for a four stroke convenient to use it see it blows the things around we can even look at this we can even blow the basketball down the down the yard 
Our uh, yard's a bit neglected at the moment. I must get out here and clean it up. So thanks for watching, guys. I've put the a nozzle on it. It's a great unit. It would actually suit a new buyer. I might put $150 on it in the shop and it should sell pretty quickly. I'm sure it's as new inside. It certainly runs like it. Uh, a great unit, yeah. It turned out not to be a repair. We didn't need to take the car be apart or anything, but uh, at least I'll give you an idea on how to service them, what to look for, and uh, if you want an idea on whether you should buy one of these, yeah, they're pretty good. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video. Bye for now.